Well, I, I, that, it's, it's a very interesting point. Um, uh, there are tools to, and, and basically, I, I was when I, uh, I was asked at a certain point in time, why are we going into countries where we see there is a, a no political will to change, where where corruption is is making it almost impossible to to address the the the, 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 the target groups and so on. The, and we have had uh, this discussion in the 90s, and the forest strategy which we had in the 1990s said get out of rainforests, get out of, of primary rainforests, no uh, commercial logging operations should be supported or funded in, in, any, in any way. And it, it almost stalled and it, 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 what we call uh, the chilling effect. Um, so bank management has become risk averse. So um, we withdrew from forestry at a large scale. But you see what happened. Deforestation even accelerated during that time. And uh, so um, the, the basic, the basic uh, assumption is that if we are not there and we are not engaging in the policy dialogue, um, there is uh, even more reason to believe that deforestation accelerates because there are no antagonists, so to say. And the 1991, uh, the 2002 forest strategy um, allowed us in a careful re-engagement uh, re in, in under these three pillars uh, balancing out economic uh, poverty and and, and 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 global public goods, and um, that was um, a very uh, important discussion with the NGO community and so on. And um, to to manage that risk, we have a set of safeguard policies, which are a guiding uh, which. For each project, has to be we have to run through all these safeguard policies. I think we have 14, and very important one is the safeguard policy on forests, which clearly says what we can do and not do. There is a, a safeguard policy on the respect of rights of indigenous peoples. Um, there is a, um, a safeguard policy on involuntary resettlement. There is a safeguard policy on international waters and critical habitats, and and so on. And and uh, for example, in in forestry, it says if we are engaging in in commercial large-scale forest operations, one way or another, um, those operations need to be certified by an independent certifier. Um, basically, uh, having a third party verifying that those forests are managed in, in, in a sustainable way. And that is a big, a big point for IFC, for example, if they finance a sawmill or a pulp mill investment or a slaughterhouse for, for cattle uh, ranges, um, they have to look at what happens outside. Huh? Um, for example, if the supply of timber for the sawmill is coming from from illegal operations. That's a clear way to stay out for us, uh, or to address it uh, through dialogue. So uh, we have a lot of these safeguards, but unfortunately, yeah, we had a couple of inspection panel cases in in the past, and we made mistakes. But uh, you, people tend to look at only at these cases and and don't see the overall portfolio which we have, which, which has partly, in many cases, very exciting outcomes.